We were talking about the commander's hiring of Cliff Kingsbury as offensive coordinator. And Dan Quinn had his introductory press conference as the commander's new head coach today. And he gave us this little nugget. There is nothing I enjoy more than doing hard shit with good people. All right. There's a commander's fan out there that's getting that tattooed on their body somewhere. Mm. Yeah, Maybe over speak. their lower back. <laughs> I like it. I, I, what I'm wondering is, uh, is, is Kingsbury going to find a, a, a pad as good as the one he had in Arizona? Mm. That house, you, you, have you ever seen the photos? That, yeah, that kind of went where viral? he did the COVID draft. Yeah, that giant bay of a living room out looking out over. Maybe the, something over the, on the Potomac. Yeah, I feel like it's not quite as... <laughs> Not quite the same feel. You think <laughs> Scottsdale? It's Scottsdale. Yeah, up I have the a hills. feeling a desert's going to be hard to find in DC. But not just that. Like that, that, that was, a, was. Oh, a, you they got they got tons of rich people over there. Yeah, I know, but it's, find it's, a place. It's, it's a different kind of vibe. Like that's uh, that's old money. He's going Outer Banks. It'll look Outer Banks ish. Yeah, right? right. It'll it'll be a it'll be a yeah it'll be a different vibe. East Coast. It's not gonna like, have it's BG. not gonna have eyes wide shut. Like uh, some weird stuff happened here. Oh, there will. Yeah, I don't have that look because there's definitely going to be weird stuff that happens there. Oh, for sure. I yeah. mean, <laughs> come on now. You look, at, look at that clip and you you know weird yeah. stuff happens. Yeah, there. absolutely. But you hire Eric Bieniemy is out. Will not be retained. Weird. Yeah. Well, the storyline on that is is uh, of Bieniemy. Remember the, the outrage over he's not being hired because he's black, and it's like, no, he's not being hired because they don't like him across the league and now he's unceremoniously getting swept to the side and nobody really cares anymore because the cat's kind of out of the bag. Almost had a mutiny this past year as the offensive coordinator in, in DC. So remember last segment, I said it can always get worse. There you go. There it is. (laughs) But we were talking about the commanders and they obviously are lining this up because they want Caleb Williams. Yeah. They're at number two. The reports have been Caleb Williams doesn't want to go and play in Chicago. They don't trust ownership in Chicago and with the Bears to surround a team with him. Now, do what leverage does Chicago have then if Caleb because the leverage for the commanders it's waning because everybody you have signaled to everyone that this is where you want to yeah. go. Because Drake May is a very good quarterback. Mm-hmm. Does he fit Cliff, Cliff Kingsbury in the, the style of play? No. Was Cliff King, Kingsbury his position coach? No. You're making this hire mm-hmm. for a specific person yes. out there. And so they want to see if Caleb Williams can leverage his way to get to D.C., his hometown, and play for the commander. So where does this lead the Bears? What leverage do the Bears have? Because Caleb Williams is playing this like he is John Elway or like he is Eli Manning. Mm-hmm. And... Does he have that power? And that's an interesting one because John Elway had a place to go. John Elway could go in and play Major League Baseball is mm-hmm. what he said he was going to go and do. If Baltimore drafted him. Nope, I'm not. I'm, I'm not good. going. I'm going to go and play baseball. And he had that that golden parachute. Eli Manning had the Manning family, the Manning family behind him. No. Is Caleb Williams? Where does he go and what does he do if it's not Chicago? And that's what teams are like, like, that's what Chicago's banking on. It's like, if we love the guy and if we can, we can convince him that, you know, coming here is an okay place. Like that's, that's what they're going to be banking on. But if he shows up and he's a malcontent, then for five years, is he just not going to do anything? Trying to find his way, his way out at all times. Like I know it sounds cliche, but you want the guy to want to be there. If you have to convince him. Do you want him there? But doesn't that seem like a bit of a red flag for Caleb Williams that sure. if things don't go well, like Washington, it's going to put a lot of eggs in that basket. And, and if things don't go well, do the fingers start to get pointed? 100%. Does he just say, I want out? I want to, I, this isn't working for me and you guys are the problem. It's not me. The, I mean, those are the questions, questions about Caleb is how he's, you know, how does he handle adversity? You know, he didn't handle it very well against the, the loss to Utah. Hadn't been great. losses to Utah. The, the, and then people got very, up, you know, upset with him because he was crying in the stands with his parents, which I have zero issue with. It, the last time he was playing college football. Like, I, that was, I felt like that was kind of overblown. But the adversity stuff, it, it, the adversity stuff on the field does not bother me. 
because I think he reacts. I mean, this is a guy who tried to basically play with a torn hamstring. I think as far as a gamer, he's a gamer. It's just getting him to the field. <laughs> it's yes, like like the, the adversity stuff, like once the game's over, I think that's where it becomes a little bit more of a I don't want to say an issue, but these are the same things we were we we wouldn't that be a, is he a good teammate? And that's what you uh, you hear about the stuff at USC, his teammates loved him. Loved him. Yeah, outside of that one report where they there were some mostly defensive guys that gave the good riddance thing. The the team being catered to him, a diva quarterback, all those things, but went out of his way to take care of guys at all times, whether you're the top of the roster, bottom of the roster. Th- those are the things that I kept hearing about him. The question I have is, remember, well, I mean, we, we, we have revisionist history now because Eli is a Hall of Famer and wins Super Bowls. He was a crybaby B, and we crushed him and his family. I mean, the things that were said about Eli Manning leading to that draft and then draft night when they basically gave the double barrel bird to the Chargers, they got annihilated. The first family of football got destroyed. So did the Spanos family for being what they had been. But uh, continue to be continue to be. Thank you. <laughs> but I, I don't think the flip side is of the Bears organization. They're very much in the same kind of boat as the Chargers have been as it pertains to ownership. Now, they've been more willing to spend money, but they have been dysfunctional at every managerial and operational hire for what when was the Super Bowl? Was it 06? This is Rex Grossman. Yeah. yeah, that sounds about right. So for almost 20 years, and that was only because your defense was God tier. I mean, I just their front office has been an absolute disaster. And you didn't make the changes. But with pulls, but he has been drafting okay. Better. But now, Darnell the, White, the, the bars not a great pass blocker. No. His run blocking was through the roof. Sure. But you Straight have for your quarterback who doesn't throw. You have massive holes though on the offensive line and in your offense. DJ Moore, you do have a receiver finally. Sure. Maybe you can, you know, use a trade to to squeeze some assets out of a, another team. Like if Washington and Washington won't be willing to to part with Terry McLaren, because why would you be like, you know what? We want Caleb Williams and nobody to throw the ball to. Yeah. You know, that the, the, the Panther strategy. That's ridiculous. Yeah. yeah Here's DJ Moore. We don't want him to actually have somebody for Bryce Young to throw to. <laughs> saw how that worked out <laughs> and nobody to block for him. Yeah, or to run. It's a disaster. But can you, can you squeeze another move to get a, another receiver? And maybe, maybe that is, maybe that's the plan. And that's the ploy from, for Chicago from here until the draft at the end of April is you sit there and you go, all right, we are going to try to set up the best way that we can to say, we have DJ Moore, we have Cole Komet. Now we went and we got a number two, a number three, and we have our tight end here. Is that going to be good enough to say we're surrounding you with weapons? It's a start, but just, from what I see, from what I look at, I just, I think this is DOA. I think it's dead on arrival. I don't, pretty tough. Th- I don't think the Bears can do anything here. And the closer we get to the draft, the less leverage they have. And it, what would be hilarious in all of this is that if everybody else knows it and everybody's talking to Washington about somehow moving up to two to get Caleb Williams. Because they know, and not, not, not that Washington wouldn't take them, but if everybody knows that Caleb is 100% not going to the Bears, I will not report, I will not be there, I will burn your organ. Like, if he's willing to go full scorched earth. And I would love it if the Bears just said, dude, call them on it. Try me. That's the, like, I don't think that they have the huevos for that. I don't, I, there's maybe five organizations, I think, in the NFL who would be willing to do that because they have so much capital that they could. If they're that dysfunctional, they do it. Well, that's, I guess that's the, <laughs> the, the, the other side of that coin, but because who did, who did San Diego draft? Fair. <laughs> <laughs> they drafted him and said, we'll figure it out, but, <laughs> but try me. Yeah. <laughs> but I just wonder if all, all of a sudden organizations are like, well, we're going to deal with Washington instead. That would be funny. Just because they know that the leverage, that Chicago is completely out-leveraged. 
it's kind of insane to think about that, but I I wonder See, if it's if it ever reaches that point. Yeah, I yeah, I would I would flip it because then Chicago could just say why deal with them when you can deal with us, and they're going to draft him at two, and we you can just jump and make sure you get him because Chicago could always say no, we're going to call him on his BS. It's fair. It's gonna be. It's gonna be. Yeah. It's gonna be the storyline. It would unless, be really funny unless they trade Fields before the draft. It's gonna be the storyline of the draft. Love it. 